Hi guys and welcome to Stefan Eats and in this video uh, we're actually going to explore a food that is fairly rare in Vancouver but I luckily found uh, three spots that do serve it. It is raining but we're going to warm up our souls with some epic Peruvian food. Peru such a unique uh, food culture, uh, the country so diverse. When you look at what Peruvian food is, it's uh, you know you have so many uh, different uh, topographies. You have mountain, you have ocean, you have jungle, uh, you have plains, you have deserts. Uh, so it's, uh, because of that, uh, Peruvian food is so unique and the ingredients are also so cool. We're actually kind of in an interesting area of Burnaby, just like one block, kind of nestled in the middle is a kind of, it looks like a mom and pop shop called El Inca Deli. Uh, and I think they're serving some down home uh, cooking, uh, including some Peruvian food. I think they also have other uh, kind of Latin American dishes. I'm fairly hungry, I haven't eaten yet, so let's go right behind over here. Yeah, so uh, kind of like a super uh, small spot. It is 3 p.m., so it's kind of in between lunch and dinner, so it's not uh, too busy uh, right away. Love the background, uh, just, <laughs> just fast Spanish. <laughs> but yeah, so cool. Uh, and I, uh, I think they don't only have Peruvian food, they also have, uh, I think it's Colombian, Mexican, and and I think it was Salvadorian food. Uh, but we've chosen the dishes that are specifically uh, Peruvian uh, for you, and there are some definite classics uh, in there. Before moving on to the food, I actually want to uh, pay or actually want to uh, direct the attention to a, a, a drink that I absolutely love, and it's called chicha morada. And chicha morada is actually made from, I think it's like a purple corn. And what they do is they'll boil it, and I think they'll boil it with uh, some, I think it's pineapple and some quince, and then they add spices to it, and I love this. It has a kind of a cool, fermented uh, sweetness to it uh, but it's so delicious yeah so refreshing a little bit of like citrusiness at the end first dish actually first two dishes that have shown up uh, we got the uh, ceviche over here just absolutely beautiful we got a mixto so it's a mixed ceviche uh, interesting addition of the corn uh, what I'm used to is normally have uh, these kind of crispy I think they're like kind of corn chips and they go inside but here they actually just added uh, straight up corn to this one uh, this one I'm super excited about this is the sopa de gallina it is really rainy it's really cold outside and this is an absolutely perfect dish uh, to uh, warm up. I fell in love with this dish too. I think it was like in a market uh, in Cusco. And I remember having this and just absolutely fell in love. And I think there are like many stalls that do this. Uh, so yeah, I was, I'm very happy to see this dish here. Just epic chicken soup. Look at all those noodles. Wow, look at the big piece of chicken too. Oh, yes, perfect. The darkness of that chicken too. And of course, the necessary egg right there. Let's just try the broth by itself first. Yeah, just super homey, uh, a little bit creamy. Uh, yeah, definitely like an essence of chicken in there. Uh, let's see if I can maybe try to get some of those noodles, maybe with a fork. And normally the noodles will be fairly soft in a soup like this. And oh, I think there's oregano in there. And then try to get some of this chicken. Now, normally what this is, is kind of more free range chicken, so it'll be a little bit harder, but look at that. Nice dark meat too. Super meaty chicken, not much fat on it. For me, I think it's more about the broth. The broth is just really good. Just so comforting, so good. Perfect start to the meal. Let's go into the ceviche. This one's really cool. So, whole bunch of ceviche, really nice portion size to be honest. Look at that, look at all these bits of seafood. And of course, you gotta get that epic juice at the bottom here. Look at that. It's almost pink, look at that pink, pinkness from it. Anyways, let's just try all this seafood. That is, that's a big spoon. <laughs> that's gonna be a very big bite. I like that citrusiness from it. The fish is still very tender. What you do with uh, ceviche, obviously, is you're cooking uh, the fish just in the acid uh, from, I think it's normally lime. You still get a little bit of like a soft uh, texture from the fish. And I'm gonna mix uh, all this together and I think it'll give me a nice bite. Uh, the sweet potato, just so classic in a ceviche. So I'm really happy to see that addition in there. And there you go. Look at all that color in there too. Perfect with those onions. Yeah, there you go. With that mix of the sweetness and a, a little bit of that kind of popping sweetness from the uh, from the corn, that's where it really kind of makes that difference. And of course, 
Gotta love the onion in there too. Anti cucho, so this is gonna be beef heart, and then on the side looks like a whole bunch of potatoes and uh, some corn. But yeah, the focus is definitely on the uh, beef heart, and I'm so excited to finally uh, try this after so long. Uh, I'm gonna try it by itself, but I think that hot sauce is gonna be calling my name, so uh, let's give it a shot first. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, very meaty, mm. a little bit chewy, but mm. get that nice texture and the seasoning is really good on there. Ah, yes, perfect. Oh, that's the sauce of dreams right there. Yeah, let's get a bite. Mm. Oh yeah, I think with that hot sauce, it adds a little bit of brightness. Fairly simple dish, but when it's done well, it's really good. And yeah, almost all any kucho is actually pretty good. Super nice of them. Uh, they actually brought an empanada. Yes, so a cheese empanada. Um, wow, yeah, big thank you. And just, oh, it's just super hot. It feels really airy. And there you go. Oh, look at that steam. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, so steamy. Oh, my God. Okay. This is definitely fresh out of the oven because I, I don't even know if I can eat this yet. It's so melty and steamy and look at the cheese on this side. Oh, wow. It's like lava. Oh, it hurts to hold. <laughs> I'm in pain. Okay, let's go. Let's take a bite. Look at that interior. Oh, it hurts. Just full of melty cheese straight out of the oven, super hot, uh, and yeah, that is just super simple, super delicious. I really like the flaky crust too on the outside. So actually, if you do come here, I'd really recommend. We didn't have, uh, we didn't originally order the empanada, but maybe you should order the empanada. Next place we have uh, is kind of like a fusion between Peruvian and Japanese, a little bit higher end. Look at the menu, a lot of the Peruvian options are for lunch. Uh, dinner didn't seem to have that many, so we are here for lunch. Finally, a beautiful day, and uh, the view is supposed to be really cool too. Before we even get into uh, food, uh, we're gonna go for uh, pretty much the most iconic drink in uh, Peru. I guess the most iconic cocktail in Peru, and it's gonna be the Pisco Sour. Pisco, kind of like a fermented kind of uh, grape juice, uh, and it has like a very unique taste to it, and then made into this cocktail. This actually looks really uh, legit. Definitely one of my favorite drinks. I, just because of the sourness, I'm a big fan of sour drinks, and this is right up my alley. It's very well balanced and very well done. This uh, first dish is uh, gonna be really cool. Uh, this is an acevichado, so it's a sushi roll. And uh, what's on top is the, actually the acevichado sauce. Now, acevichado sauce is uh, very similar to a uh, sauce you would find in a ceviche. I think there's a uh, salmon, uh, definitely some avocado in there, and I think there's a uh, deep fried shrimp, almost like uh, a dynamite roll. Uh, but kind of like fancified and a little bit uh, Peruvianified. I'm gonna get this guy uh, from that side here and look at that, just all that sauce. I wanna get as much of that sauce as possible and here you go. First of all, the shrimp is just perfectly fried and then just those big chunks of avocado, the creaminess uh, from the salmon and then yeah, actually the sushi rice is just so well cooked. But then yeah, that sauce is uh, kind of like citrusy so it kind of brightens it up a little bit and that's what I really like. It's a very well done sushi roll, perfect uh, cooking on the rice and just super solid roll all together. Next one is a play on anticucho. So anticucho, uh, like you've seen at the other uh, place, is normally a grilled uh, beef heart. In this case, they've actually just used uh, a pool pose. So uh, there's octopus, there's some uh, potatoes in there, there's a romesco sauce, and then uh, the beans on the bottom. I'm not sure exactly what this is. This looks like it might be potentially fishkin. The star of the show will obviously be the octopus, which is right here. And look at that, just this giant piece of octopus. I'm gonna grab that just by itself. Oh, Oh man, <laughs> yeah, let's try the octopus by itself, just to start, but yeah, I love just that kind of charring on there, and maybe some olive oil, it looks like. I love that kind of tender uh, octopus. 
octopus. It's so meaty and then that romesco sauce just adds a kind of peppery uh, smokiness. I think the, the thing you're supposed to do in this uh, just do it right now is cut a little bit of this octopus here. Oh, and this one, this one, you can tell it has a little bit of uh, that uh, jiggliness from the middle. Oh yes, perfect. And then we're gonna kind of mix it with all these ingredients. There you go, get a potato, get some of that bean if I can. And then of course, get some of that sauce on there too. And there you go. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, finish it off with a crispy hat. There you go. This could go to the Guggenheim. <laughs> okay, let's take a bite. Mm. And that combination is definitely where it shines. Mm. There's kind of like a raw, there's like a raw pickled onion in there too. Yeah, do that instead. Make sure you cut just a small piece of the octopus and then just kind of combine it with all the ingredients. It's meant to go together and for a good reason. And our mains have arrived and uh, these look pretty scrumptious, I must say. So now uh, first we're gonna go into this uh, pork belly sandwich. I think there's an ahi uh, chili sauce here. So ahi uh, pepper, uh, one of probably the most uh, famous uh, peppers in Peru. Uh, you'll find it in many sauces. Uh, you also put it in ceviche normally. And this one just has a giant pork belly in there. I think there might be even some sweet potato potentially. Look at that, just epically crispy uh, pork belly there. And look at that, oh, just covered and lathered in sauce. Oh, looks super good. Okay, let's take a bite. That pork belly is so tender, so crispy, just perfect amount of fat. And then just, mmm. Now that bun, what I like is, since it's very juicy, the bun kind of doesn't get soggy. And because of that, uh, you just get a nice kind of solid crispy bite. That pork belly is just as tender as Barry White's voice. It's just a massive piece of pork belly with some sauce and then just kind of like a pickled uh, onion kind of thing going on here. I'm gonna try some of these yuca fries. The yuca will normally be a little bit more starchy, a little bit more stringy. And we're gonna dip it. I think this is like an ahi chili sauce too. And there you go, just super yellow. Mmm. Oh. Oh, that's what they took. Thick, starchy, and but very well cooked and not too greasy. Maybe the sauce could be a bit more spicy, but still has a lot of flavor. This is a seafood paella uh, with some, uh, I think this is some sable fish uh, croquettes. And yeah, first of all, I think the sable fish croquette is definitely gonna be right up my alley. Look at this, just absolutely amazing. Wow, this is actually working. I'm very surprised. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. I don't know how to describe that. It's like a, almost like a pate. It almost tastes like bacalao, to be honest. This should have a, I think it's forbidden rice, and it just has a whole bunch of seafood on it. And also some edamame, which is kind of an interesting, um, an interesting addition. Oh yeah, that forbidden rice just adds a, a kind of like crunch. A really cool textural dish. And then I just got a scallop in there. Scallop was very tender. I was gonna say there was squid ink in here, but I'm not quite sure. I don't think it is. I think it's just the color of the rice. The seafood itself is really good, but I wish maybe they used like a stronger seafood stock uh, to make the rice with. Other than that, very, very solid dish. Hey, no, hey, it's, it's forbidden. So cool, a steam plug, amazing. We are here, and actually in a very kind of touristy uh, part of town, Gastown. The last place you'd really expect to find a kind of like down home a Peruvian joint. I actually used to work right across the street, just over here. I actually used to work at a language school a very long time ago as an activity coordinator. And once in a while I would walk across and actually tried them a couple times. I thought the food was fairly good, but I don't think I've ever tried like the really big dishes there. This will be our last uh, Peruvian place uh, for this vlog. Let's go. Yes. Steam plug. Very good steam plug. Uh, first dish here, and it's a tamal verde. So obviously, uh, tamal. Uh, 
uh, kind of similar to the word tamale. Uh, I think it's the same concept. There's a corn husk and then you steam uh, the masa inside the corn husk and then uh, normally it comes with sauces. This one is kind of cool. The green, I think, comes from cilantro, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure if there's anything inside, but then I love that kind of just pork on the side there too. Let's try it just by itself first. Very creamy. I do get a little bit of like a herby taste. I think the move to do is to maybe mix it with a little bit of this pork. It's like almost creamy and then spicy, a little bit peppery. Mm, that pork too, it's really good. So three dishes and we've got them all together and the smells coming from here are just amazing. So good and first, okay, that chicken is just wafting in my nostrils. I'm gonna have to ignore this as hard as it is to do, uh, but I'm gonna go actually for the ceviche and what I really like already about the ceviche is it looks really legit. Uh, so. Uh, what's really cool about this one is you get the kind of traditional Peruvian ingredients in there. You get the kind of, um, I forgot what these are called. There's like white uh, corn, a very special type of corn. And then these, yes, I remember these. These are just so cool and so amazing. I normally find them with almost every ceviche. You're a typical sweet potato. And then we just got the fish one on this one. Let's mix it around a little bit. Oh, this looks so good. I'm gonna get some of these crispy bits in there. And then there we go. I think this is the closest you can get to ceviche in Vancouver that is uh, kind of Peruvian style. Just that kind of spicy uh, liquid at the bottom has a little bit of spice to it. Uh, the fish is very nicely marinated and then yeah that sauce is so good, so spicy, so fresh. Uh, so much kind of citrusy kick to it. You get the texture uh, from the corn and of course a little bit of that sweetness uh, from the sweet potato. They got the flavors pretty much on point with this one. You know what I'm trying to say to you? Hmm? You know what I'm trying to say to you? Ceviche. You know, it's like a capiche, you know, savish. <laughs> Next one is lomo saltado. I don't think I've ever had this dish. I've seen it on menus, but I don't think I've ever had it. Uh, it's steak, uh, some onions, I think maybe some peppers, and then on top of fries. And I think it's a kind of vinegar sauce and comes with the rice too. Okay. The steak is fairly tender, it's cooked nicely. Uh, the onions are super tender too. And the fries at the bottom are kind of a cool addition. I don't think I had a fry in that bite, but mm, the sauce is fairly mild. I think I could use some sauce though. So let's put some sauces on there. So let's get, oh, I think I'm gonna do a mix. I'm gonna put some of this guy on there. There you go. And maybe some of the yellow one too. Perfect. Oh. When you add that sauce to it, it adds a little bit of that saltiness that it does need. Yeah, they're kind of like creamy, spicy, and just very bright, and it brightens up the whole dish. Actually, the addition of rice is kind of interesting because Peru is a very diverse country, and one of the things uh, that Peru had for a very long time is uh, immigration from uh, China, also from Japan. Uh, but in Peru, what's really cool is you have what's called chifa cuisine, uh, which is kind of like a uh, a blend of uh, Chinese uh, influence, but also mixed with Peruvian ingredients. You'll see it in a lot of dishes that will have, uh, you know, rice or fried rice uh, with some of these dishes. Another sleeper dish, and especially in Peruvian cuisine, is the chicken pollo a la brasa. No, this is rotisserie chicken. We asked for the leg, comes with more fries, and the smell already is pretty amazing, and I'm just gonna kind of dig into it however I can. Oh, well, you know what? I'm gonna go into this side here. smelling for the last uh, 10 minutes and I'm so excited. Look at this big boy with all that skin on there. Oh, yes. Oh, oh wow. Get it, <laughs> get it, get it, get it. Wow, that just is a burst of flavor. That skin has so much flavor. Sometimes with roasted or rotisserie chicken, there's always a small chance that, you know, it's a little bit dry. This is not the case. This is super juicy, super tender. That skin, whatever herbs, whatever spices they put on there, is just working 100%, beautifully seasoned. 
This is one of the best rotisserie chickens uh, in the city. If you like chicken and you just like a simple kind of roast chicken, but just done expertly, come here. This dish is so good. I might even share some with the cameraman. Just I said the dish, like it could be any part of the dish. Drumstick. I'll stop. What do you think I am? A small fry? Hey. Oh yeah, and the last one is very unique. It's actually a uh, lucuma uh, ice cream. So lucuma is a fruit that's just very uh, specifically uh, from that region. It's found in uh, Peru, uh, Bolivia, and I think some parts of Chile, maybe Ecuador too. Fruit is supposed to be uh, fairly sweet, uh, a little bit chalky, and kind of hard. From what I've read, I think it's house made, so they actually make it here, and that's super cool to me. So uh, let's give this a shot, and right away I can feel just the absolute thickness. Uh, definitely thicker than a lot of ice creams, and Look at that, it's just really nice. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's butterscotch. That's what it tastes like. Uh, maybe with a small hint of like fruity sweet potato-ness. That's another winner for me. That is so good. Yeah, if you come here, uh, do not forget to finish on this. Favorite dishes here, ceviche. Uh, that amazing chicken and the tamal verde and then get the ice cream at the end the ice cream is just a perfect finish to this meal I'm gonna say this is the closest food you can get to Peru in all of Vancouver out of all the spots We did try for this video. I think this resembles it the most the food. It's 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 really good That will do it for our uh, Peruvian video of uh, Vancouver uh, like you saw, not many options for proven cooking. Yeah, three joints. <laughs> not that many. Anyways, that will do it for us. If you do enjoy our videos, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and of course, uh, hit us up with those comments. Uh, get the algorithm going, you know? Let me know uh, if there's other spots I should be trying in uh, Vancouver, and of course, uh, wherever our travels may take us. I will see you very soon. Ciao for now.